Hey, good day, everybody. Welcome to Comics Workshop from MerrickBennett.com. And special thanks to our patrons of the Patreon for helping us make these live draws possible. All right, I'm posting uh, comments saying, if you have comments and suggestions as we draw together today, feel free to put them in the comments. And we've got some paper. I'm gonna start with a pencil. And I also have my black inking pen. And we'll see where we go today. I have a little idea. We're going to keep it super simple as usual. But we're going to create a little picture. Remember last week we were drawing branches. This picture got a little complicated, but it's all very simple patterns of branches growing and branching off and then wrapping around each other. So I finished inking that. And um, that's up on the Patreon site there. And today we're going to take those branches break it down into something even simpler, and then build it up into something. Well, let's find out what happens. I have a little idea here that we can try. So as usual, I'm going to trace out my imaginary margins. Just do a single tree today. Let's draw one tree. But we're going to put a surprise in that tree. So um, let's see. In this tree, let's put, let's start with something simple, like a circle. So there's going to be a big circle, a ring in this tree. So here I'll do sort of a roundish shape. I'm penciling. And I'm just kind of getting the shape about where I want it. There's a lot of lines there, right? But it's about roughly a round shape. And now we'll do just what we did last, uh, well, a couple of weeks ago, where we traced around that shape and we got it to be its own ring like that, right? And I started out doing these with letters and different symbols and things, and it got very complicated. So I'm breaking it down to a ring and we'll see what happens when we have a ring in front of us. And we, we're gonna grow a tree right around this ring. It's gonna support and hold this ring. All right, so there's my ring. Let's give ourselves also a ground. So that ring, if the light's shining down, this ring floating in the air, Maybe we'll make a little scratchy shadow under it. Doesn't that look like it's floating now? Little image, little meditation of the circle floating in the air with the shadow under it. Now, out of that shadow, we're going to sprout a tree. And here's the sprout. It's going to go up. It can wave. It can curve. It's going to go through the ring somewhere and come out to the top. And then where it gets interesting is off that tree, we'll put some of our branches. These are like the branches. Remember, we grew those branches last week and we tucked them under and over each other. So they're either under or they're over as they weave around each other. Same thing's going to happen here. We'll just do lines for now, though. Let's do an alternating branch pattern. So maybe looks like there's a little more space on this side. So I'll make a branch coming up, passing through the ring and passing out. There we go, two branch tree. Let's do another branch coming up, passing through the ring and passing out on this side. There we go. Keeping it super simple, right? Let's go from this one. Let's bring a branch off this branch, pass out of the ring. Let's bring another branch off of here to pass out of the ring. Each time they pass out, they cross over, right? Let's do that on this one too. Makes it sort of a little claw that passes out of the ring. This one could have one, two, maybe three branches, maybe four, a branch off a branch off a branch. That's looking kind of nice there. I like that look. And remember how our branches kind of looked for space, looked for light. I like how these curve. Your branches can be totally straight or they can be curving. Um, let's see, let's bring a branch in here. The one thing I'm gonna avoid is a branch crossing where another branch already crosses. So maybe a branch comes off of here and goes out that way. Maybe there's a little branch that comes off of here. There's a lot of space here, huh? but not a lot of places to fit a branch out. So maybe this branch just comes up, and goes through there, but maybe it also crosses there and maybe it crosses there. Now, this is already getting kind of complicated, so I'm just gonna add a couple more here and there, just making it up as we go. One thing I like to do, though, is I count the number of crossings. So we'll start here. One, two, 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Hmm. Now, if this ring, we're going to ink this ring to go, say, over one crossing and under the next crossing. And because of that, over, under, over, under, we're going to want an even number of crossings. So let's put one more branch here. That's 22 crossings. That should work. And you'll see why once we get inking. Now, here's the cool part. We can weave this tree through this ring, right, by going over, under, over, under with our branch pattern, right? So this branch won't actually be a line. It'll actually be this cartoon thickened branch. The stump, the trunk, not the stump, the trunk, we'll put lines on either side, see that? And I'm making those lines a little darker because this will be my trunk. I have these lines to show me where the branches go. And now I'm gonna render, flesh out those branches into actual woody limbs. So here we go. Now, I'm not sure if that's over under, let's calculate here. If this side of the trunk goes under, then this next one goes over, then this next one goes under. That's why I made sure we had a, um, an even number of crossings because I wanted this ring to calculate out to be an even number over, under, over, under. Otherwise we'd have to double up an over or double up an under. Ooh, that's looking really cool. Oh, I can tell this is gonna look really cool like this. I kept it pretty simple. I could have done a hundred more branches here and had lots and lots of crossings, but I don't know, simpler is better, I think, especially when we're trying out this design. Here, let me help you see this tree by erasing these guidelines a little. Oh, doesn't that look cool where the branch goes? I love how it goes over and under and it kind of grasps and holds that, that, that loop there. Now, when we ink this, you can ink this in color if you have colored markers, uh, but I would recommend inking it in black and white. I'm gonna wait on these internal crossings to decide later. I do know this one goes over, right? And then this one goes under. Then this one goes over. As long as I kept it to, as long as I kept it to an even number of crossings of the loop with all those ends, the cross ending up outside, whoops, that's gonna be under, isn't it? I'm talking as I draw, then I should be good. So this will go, the loop will go over the branch, the branch will go under the loop. Now here's where I can calculate in, inwards here. So if this goes under, I think it should go over when it crosses that branch inside the loop. There we go. I just go with whatever feels like it'll look more interesting on the picture itself. So this goes, but I do follow a pattern with the loop. So that goes over, that goes under. There we go. You may find your loop looks a little choppy, especially if you're starting and stopping drawing it. So if that happens, you can go back over and round it out a little more and then go in and erase inside those branches that pass over it. Oh, I love how that's looking. I'm gonna leave a little branch here so I could maybe put a little bird friend on there. Or maybe the maybe any birds I add in here will sit on the branches up above the loop. So I'll just keep going, fleshing out these branches and this tree will take shape. Let's see, we're about nine minutes in. I'm trying to keep these um, sessions Fairly short, knowing everybody's, if you join us live, you're taking a break midday. I'm gonna put that, this one goes under, so I'll put it over here, whatever looks more interesting. So I'm keeping these fairly short. So um, if you have any suggestions or comments, feel free to share them. Oh, Miss Heiler says, looking good, looks cool. Thank you, um, nice to draw with you today. So I will, um, I'm going to finish these branches and we'll lay a little ink on here and see how it looks. I notice the central stem, the central trunk goes under. 
and this branch goes over. Let's do the rest of our crossings here. That branch goes under. This branch goes over. So let's put it under here. Whatever weaves the branch is better. And this one goes under. Whoops. Then this one goes over. You can curve them any which way. Then this one goes under. Ooh, I like how those branches clasp, clasp the, the loop. Then this one's going to go over. We did it even, so it should work out to go under here. Even number of crossings, and it works out. Good. So that little, that's like that calculated around here and came up with an even number. And our system says, okay, it's going to work. We'll tuck that under. Look at that. We're done with these branches then. If you want to add a little knob here or there, maybe a little square end branch that got pruned, add some interest to it. I could spend some time cleaning these guidelines up, but I don't think I need to. In fact, doesn't it look kind of cool with sort of rough lines for the branches and then leaving the loop smooth? It helps differentiate them. The one other thing that you might want to do with your pencil is go in and do um, a little darker shading under where the loop crosses over the branches. That brings it out makes it float above those branches. Doesn't that look cool? I just do it under the loop. And maybe I won't shade the loop. I think the loop, if I shade the loop, the loop looks a little darker, but no shade makes it look like it's glowing, luminous. Maybe we could color it yellow or gold or something. So that means there'll be a little shade under here, a little shade under here. Might want to shade where the branches cross too. Just the undersides wherever your light source is coming from. And I started out thinking the light was coming straight down because oh, I'm drawing at midday probably. There we go. That deepens the, uh, the overhang of that loop. I love how that looks. Very cool. All right. Let's put a little ink on here and see how it looks inked. Remember my, my pie process is I pencil my artwork, I test it out on a reader, then I ink it and I erase those pencil lines. All right, so, and, and as I'm inking the tree and the loop, maybe I'll think about who could be in sitting in here, any birds, any little, um, you know, little characters I wanna throw in there to make people smile when they find them. Um, maybe I wanna have a whole bunch of stars all through this, maybe. I'll end up wanting to color the background blue or purple. Maybe I'll want to add in like a moon, a full moon shining. Boy, the moon was so bright last night. I went out and ice skated around midnight and it was like bright as day. So maybe I'll work that into my picture. Haven't decided yet. I could fill the sky with stars, but let's focus on the tree and the loop to begin with. So. Um, I'll come in here with my inking pen. We've got a couple more minutes, folks. So keep doodling your branches, keep doodling your loops. If you want to move into inking, it'll look a little like this. I'll choose a place. I usually start in the upper left, so I'm not smudging it with my hand. So I'll just choose a branch to start on and I'll follow along. And that makes it a little clearer to read. Oh, you know what would look cool? I bet if this loop had sort of thicker lines, maybe I maybe I want to do my loop in color, right? Maybe I want to use a, a colored marker of some sort. Maybe I'll just do it with dark black for now, so it's really easy to see. You can have your loop also, it doesn't have to be smooth, does it? It could be like sunburst patterns or your loop could actually be a chain or a loop, sort of like we did um, with our other ones a couple weeks ago where we had loops entwined with loops. That's the next frontier. So, so a challenge for you, once you've got the hang of doing these simple branches with a simple shape, try, whoops, I'm gonna focus as I'm inking as I talk here. Try 
doodling in like a letter from your name or a symbol like a star or a heart or a sun with lots of arms or some crazy creature like a uh, flying magician octopus, like what came up in our library workshop last night. Um, and see if you can doodle some more interesting shape in here. I've been practicing in my um, sketchbook here. I've been practicing with a couple different shapes. Squares and diamonds are really fun. Maybe loops of loops, maybe more branches. Um, I'm still working on that complicated one. <laughs> but I'm trying out lots of different ideas here. But I kind of like how this thick line looks on the loop. And now the thin scratchy lines for the branches. These are leafless trees. Come spring, we can draw trees with leaves again, but right now it's all winter branches all the time. So last night we had a library workshop. We had 30 some families dialing in. It was so fun. And then afterwards around midnight, uh, well afterwards, I went out and ice skated around under the full moon and I was looking at all the winter trees, just getting ideas, all these ideas of things I wanted to draw, the ice and the trees and the moonlight. So that's what I'm going to work on this weekend is a whole bunch of doodles that also draw the, the animals and the weather around me. It's a really great way when I, when I need to relax from like uh, the graphic novels I'm working on and stuff, I will pull out one of these little doodles. I can even keep this one at my desk and I'll keep inking it and I will post the results. Oh, I like how those branches look with the, the shading, the little bitty ink lines, giving them rough bark here. So fun to draw like this and just explore and discover new techniques. Um, I will post the results of this over on the Patreon and we're doing workshops every Friday um, at noon and every Monday around noon with a couple little adjustments here or there over the next month. Um, we're gonna be drawing lots of um, nature doodles and things like this. And we'll also, this Mondays we're doing, uh, oh yeah, right, a musical monster band. These were all the banjos that auditioned for last Monday. Um, so head on over to the Patreon if you wanna see those. Thanks to the patrons of the Patreon who sign up there and join Comics Workshop there. Thank you so much for making this possible. Thank you for joining us today. Um, let me know if you have any suggestions for future topics you wanna to cover because I am totally open. We can doodle about anything. And if you're working on something and would like to um, draw together on it, let me know. This is so fun to be able to, to get together and you know join up in the middle of the day and just doodle together and I hope you can go back to your day and all the stuff you're doing this afternoon with a new sense of possibility and creativity. I love my my moon my full moon tree here with its magical ring entwined in the branches. I'm going to go out and take some moonlight tonight and maybe do some ice skating and I will think of this magical doodle as I'm out there. And I'll think of you folks. So have a nice weekend. Good luck with all your artwork, all your comics, and all your other work. Be safe, be healthy. And I will see you Monday. We'll be back Monday midday uh, for our next Monster Musical Band audition. I think it's something about accordions, which are really fun to draw. So See you Monday. Head on over to the Patreon if you want to get the invites and updates. And I'll post the finished artwork there. All right, folks. Lovely to see you. Talk to you soon. Draw with you soon.